Hi, everybody. I guess it's a little bit uh, dark out here, darker than I thought it would be. That's okay. <laughs> uh, so, like I said, I'm going to be adding in uh, not just travel stories about me moving to Israel in the process of that. I will be adding lives regularly, at least twice a week, uh, about writing tips. Uh, I've talked about it before, but as most of you guys know, um, I am writing uh, for businesses. I'm helping businesses with their marketing content, uh, with what they put on their website, how they describe their business, how to introduce themselves on their About Me page with their clients. Hey, Jen, what's up? Good morning. Um, and writing blogs for them on a monthly basis, social media content. It's uh, It's been so fun for me to get to do this work more often and get to help people who struggle with this. But not everyone is in a place where they can hire a writer. And that's okay. Um, I do want to help you with my knowledge if this is knowledge that you're looking for. So everyone knows that having written content regularly for your business is a really good thing. You know, you hear words about SEO and web presence and stuff like that. Um, and having a blog is one of those things that's super important right now to show that you know what you're doing, to put yourself as an authority, things of that nature. So I wanted to share three quick tips with you about getting past writer's block um, because it's something that people really struggle with. They get to that blank Word document with the blinking cursor on the page and then just freeze up like something about it just like really just locks them up. So, uh, so the first idea I want to give you is talk through your ideas with a friend. You know that you need a blog, so sit down with a friend and go back and forth on it. There's a really great story about Brene Brown. It's just like you think about how many books Brene Brown has written and how many books that she sold, and you wouldn't think that someone like that would have like writer's block or be afraid of the blank page. It's a struggle for her every time. If you read, um, if you read the book Big Magic by um, Elizabeth Gilbert, she was the author of Eat, Pray, Love, she talks about how um, Brene Brown got around this like writer's block, this discomfort, because sitting in front of the screen trying to write things out word for word was just too much. So what she did is she scheduled this girls weekend trip with her friends. She had content for a book. She needed help putting it together. But it was easier for her to talk through the ideas with her mouth to a person, to an audience. Sometimes when you're looking at the screen, there's no one there, there's no one to talk to, and it's just enough to lock you up and you can't actually write it. So what Brene Brown did is she went through these spurts throughout the weekend with her girlfriends where she would tell stories related to her research, related to her latest book, and her friends are typing along and trying to get through it as fast as possible, and then Brene Brown would take the content, go back to her computer and kind of organize it, come back out and tell more stories. And it helped things flow a lot more easier, made it a lot more painful. So I love that idea. And that's actually something I do with my clients. It's just like they have all of these great ideas when it comes to like their business blogs and things like that. But getting it written out, it just, there's just some disconnect. So what I do is I sit and I talk to them on the phone and we just talk through it. And then all of the ideas start to flow why they're in business, what they're good at, what they do, what they want to inform their clients on. So Schedule coffee with a friend, talk through your ideas. Um, and even bonus, it can be like kind of like double double purpose if you do like networking with like a business friend. Anyways, another thing I want to tell you about for getting past writer's block, um, perfectionism is not real, <laughs> but drafting is. So um, you are never gonna get it right on the very first draft. No one does. That's not just me saying that. That's like every story you hear about the greatest writers which I'm not, but the greatest writers, they go through drafts. It takes a process. You're not going to get it perfect the first time. So let go of saying things perfectly. Let go of staying within a certain word count. Just get it out there. I don't know if you've ever read Anne Lamott's book, Bird by Bird, but she has a lot of writing instructions in there. And she talks about making an SFD. Uh, what that is, is a shitty first draft. You need to let go of writing it perfectly the first time. When you have that cursor blinking up at you like a little evil eye, just write. Write in lists. Uh, write curse words. Write in terrible grammar. Just get anything out on the paper just to kind of like uncork the bottle. It's just like you want to just get things moving. Um, also, for what it's worth, hi, Arthal. Um, For what it's worth, it's really... 
it's a lot harder to write something short and clear rather than write something long and mediocre. Write something long and mediocre, and then you'll have stuff to mine out at the end of it when you do your first draft. Drafting's normal. I'm sure like there's, there's a story that Ernest Hemingway, big famous Ernest Hemingway, um, he wrote the end of his book, Farewell to Arms, 47 times before he felt like he got it right. I'm not saying you'll have to write yours 47 times. I'm just saying that drafting is normal. It's a part of the process. Write an SVD, write a shitty first draft, just get anything down on the paper and then go back and mine the nuggets. It, they'll be there. I promise they'll be there. Yay! Exactly what I need writing tips. Good. I'm glad, Ortal. Um, but yeah, just perfectionism isn't real. Don't get trapped by that. Just, just start. It's okay to draft. Um, and another thing specifically for, for business blogs, it's just like sometimes you get to the point, it's like, you know, a lot of my clients are bookkeepers and stuff like that and accountants and they're like, how am I going to write anything interesting? And it's just like, no one thinks of like bookkeeping or accounting as, as sexy or, you know, like you're not going to go pick up, pick up a novel about an accountant or something like that. It's not about that. You are writing to an audience that wants to learn, that wants to have um, uh, in a, it wants you to solve a problem for them. They're not looking for a novel, they're looking for education, for information. And so figure out what the people you're talking to, your clients, your audience, um, if someone were to read this, what do you want them to learn from it? Um, so something that I have done, what I did when I picked the, the topic for this post is um, I went back to what my clients asked me the most or have the hardest time with. Um, uh, hi, Heather. Hi, Clarence. Um, I go back to what my, my clients have talked to me about. It's just like, why don't you write the blogs? Why do you have a hard time with it? And a lot of them, they just get to that blank screen and they freeze up. I've heard that so many times where it's just like, all right, that's a problem I can talk to. That's a problem I can help solve. And that helps give me something to talk about, something to be helpful, something to be useful. So if you're writing for your business blog, it's just like, Think about your calls or even talk to your clients and be like, okay, what do I, what is it I solve for you? Or what are you not sure about? What can I educate you on? What are you curious about? And talk about that. They, they just want good information. Um, so don't worry about being Hemingway. Don't worry about getting it perfect the first time. Um, don't worry that writing comes hard to you. Find ways to, to, to make it work. I promise you, you'll be able to create something that's super useful that's helpful and yeah I know that whoever is uh whoever's watching this if you're trying to create a business blog the fact that you're at that point means it's like it's you're knowledgeable you have all this stuff to share and I know that you can get to the point where you can share it um and as always if you feel like you need more help with uh writing tips I will be doing these videos more frequently sharing that to my business page which I have linked here uh Puckapith content uh, and if you feel like you just don't want to deal with the writing or it's just super uncomfortable for you and you don't want to deal with like this whole blank page phobia, give me a call. I'll, I'll help you get stuff set up. Um, I love, I love helping businesses find their voices, connect with people and really, um, streamline their message and connect with their, their clients better and all that stuff. This is where I live, where my heart is, and I want to help you with that if that's something I can, or if that's something that you need for your business. Anyways, I'm gonna let you guys go. But those are three tips for getting past your writer's block. I hope it's helpful. If you have any more questions related to writing or marketing content, put it in the comments. I'm happy to do another live on that. And I hope you have a lovely day. I will talk to you guys again tomorrow. Bye.